Cades Cove is an isolated valley located in the East Tennessee section of Great Smoky Mountain National Park. The valley was once home to numerous settlers before the formation of the national park around it. Today, Cades Cove is the single most popular destination for visitors to the park, attracting over 2 million visitors a year due to its well-preserved homesteads, scenic mountain views, and abundant display of wildlife. You can leave your cell phones at home. There are no bars in this place. The first permanent settlers, John and Lucretia Oliver, arrived in Cades Cove during the autumn of 1821. They initially constructed a crude dwelling that may not have been more than a glorified lean-to. The pioneer family may very well have starved to death that first winter had it not been for the kindness of a Cherokee Indian who brought them dried pumpkins in their time of need. The Olivers survived and eventually built the cozy home we know today as the John Oliver Cabin. John P. Cable moved to Cades Cove after the Civil War. Sometime around 1868, John Cable and his sons built what became the largest mill in Cades Cove. Construction of the sawmill and adjoining gristmill required a canal, two dams, and a long wood flume, all of which were labor-intensive endeavors. Water carried by the flume powered a big overshot wheel that turned the millstone used to grind corn into meal. At times, the elaborate system also powered a sawmill for cutting lumber and a wheat mill for flour. Becky Cable may well be the best-known woman to ever live in Cades Cove. During her life, she farmed, herded cattle, housed boarders, operated a store, swung an axe, drove a team of horses, shoot her own sheep, and outworked just about any man. Water has always been the lifeblood of Cates Cove. Nearly 20 perennial creeks and branches flow into the cove. Aside from sustaining life, water powered the grist mills and sawmills at the time. Creeks provided a place for children to fish and swim. And of course, water was always required for baptism by immersion. Abrams Falls continues to rank amongst the prettiest waterfalls in the Great Smoky Mountains. Religious meetings at family homes probably began in the early 1820s, culminating with the establishment of totally independent Cades Cove Baptist Church in 1829. A rough log cabin constructed in 1832 served as the church home until the present-day Cades Cove Primitive Baptist Church was erected in 1887. Few records document the early history of the Methodist Church in the Cove, but the first church building was not constructed until sometime after 1840. It would have been a simple log structure which probably served as a schoolhouse too. Thirteen members, including the preacher, were expelled from the Cades Cove Baptist Church in 1839 over philosophical differences concerning missionaries, Sunday school, and other matters. The soon-to-be-called primitives believed in predestination and therefore saw no need to support missions in their quest for saving lost souls. The missionaries disagreed and upon expulsion officially formed the Cades Cove Missionary Baptist Church. Enlisted at the age of 15, William Fightin' Billy Tipton was severely wounded and left for dead on a Revolutionary War battlefield in 1779. A large, handsome, red-headed man, Fightin' Billy earned the name for his propensity to fight after the war, as much as during the war. As a land spectacular in 1821, William Tipton acquired the first legally recorded state grant for land in Cates Cove. Elijah Oliver Cabin offers its own window to the past. Jack Anthony originally owned this property and may have built the cabin sometime in the mid to late 1850s. Elijah Oliver purchased the Anthony property and moved his family there in 1865. The cabin seemed ahead of its time with its stylish split-level appearance. 
Elijah's tax payment for his home and property totaled $1.40 in the year 1880. The son of John Oliver was an ordained deacon and served as clerk of Gates Cove Primitive Baptist Church for 38 years. Cades Cove has been preserved by the Great Smoky Mountain National Park to look much the way it looked in the 1800s. In filming this documentary, I made many mistakes, but I also learned from them as well. Also, I learned a great deal about the history of Cades Cove. I couldn't have done it without the help of a particular book, Cades Cove, Window to a Secret World. If you ever have the opportunity, I highly recommend taking the trip into the secret world of Cades Cove. Mm -hmm.